Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a new Python package called Great Tables. This produces really nicely formatted tables. It's actually a port over from an R package that does a very similar thing. It's actually one of my most popular, most viewed YouTube videos on R packages. And so I'm excited to see how it presents in Python. Most of my content is about statistics, AI, and the use of R, but I'm looking at expanding into more Python, so certainly if this video is popular and that's something of interest, let me know, and I'll be producing more Python content, as it certainly fits in with the things that I'm interested in, so AI, statistics, research, and data analysis. So let's dive in and take a look at what the tables look like and what the code for it looks like. So I will put this link in the video description, we can see that it is the Posit Developers GitHub page. So they are the producers of RStudio. They're expanding that out to work with Python as well as R. I'd never actually realized that in R where it was GT and GT summary, that was for great tables and I've used it for quite a long time. They've been a bit more explicit here with Python. So we can see here on the home page, they show us a diagram here with components of a table. So these are all of the things we are going to be able to edit and alter. They give us a little bit of sample code. So we can see here, nice simple looking table, nice separation of the columns. And so just showing us how they fetched some S&P data and then they constructed the table. We can see pretty nice clean format, really clear what each of the things is doing. Like most packages that they produce, they have a good number of built-in data sets. So these are really nice for creating reproducible examples. They show a number of examples of their own. If you are doing any teaching or setting up templates for people, these are really helpful just having these built in. And so we come down a little bit further. Installation, just like pretty much any Python stuff, we're just pipping it in. And so if we come back up to the top and let's take a look at some examples and then we'll go and have a look at the getting started after that. So here are some examples, a bit of a range. You can see the first few are fairly basic, but just very nice, cleanly presented. Generally, we want to not have too many lines in there when we can help it. For each example, they've got the code there. So this is always a great way of getting started with a new package is just being able to take the code and be able to reproduce what they're showing us here. As we come down, we've got a couple of hyperlinks in this one, which is nice, definitely good functionality. And then further down, we've got ones which also have corresponding heat mapping and another one with some icons as well. If you're also an R user, you can track back in some of my old R videos and you'll see a couple of examples where I've produced tables with various different icons and graphs embedded within the table. These are some of the things that this package can produce. Let's have a look at the getting started. Uh, Posit is generally pretty good with being able to step you through. So they've got a few more examples here and they really do step a particularly a more novice coder. Even if you're kind of an intermediate, it's always nice just having really clear, copyable bits of code showing you how to do the different bits and pieces. Remember, we have that table structure that we saw before. So the head of the foot of the stub, column labels, all the different formatting, all nicely presented here. So we can step through, figure out all the different pieces that we want to have go into our table. So on the overview page, they give that repeat of that diagram, just nice reminder of what we call the different components of a table. And then from there, table structure. In addition to being able to do just basic formatting ourselves, and they've got some examples here on the formatting page, there's also themes. So they detail the different options for setting up themes. And then if we jump from there into the pre-made themes, and hopefully this will be something where people develop their own themes and share them as well. Certainly with R, that's very popular that people will make a nice theme, or in some cases it's more of a novelty or a fun theme. Again, you can track back and see a video I did where they had Barbie and Oppenheimer themes for graphs and tables. And being able to just take a theme, add it immediately into our table and get a particular style of formatting is really handy. 
So I'm not going to go through all of the different sections here, but I did want to go just to this last one because I think this is one of the neater things. And I really like making tables where there's an element of data visualization. They do note here that Nanopot is still experimental. And so a nanopot is just where we're putting in particular plots. And this is handy for things like little histograms of distributions that we can embed inside of our table. And you can get really creative with this. It can be a really nice way of presenting a uh, combined data summary and data visualization. So this is pretty cool. And I'm sure once you've had a bit of a play with it, um, basic bar graphs as well up and down, sometimes candles, things like that, will go really nicely into a table and be able to present with that extra visual element. So this was a quick summary of great tables. If you are a Python user and you've been struggling to get nice looking tables, I think this is going to be a really helpful package for you. So that's it for today. Definitely let me know if you would like more Python content on my channel. And I'll be right really soon with more videos on stats, research, AI, and random stuff.